So, what is new? Not much on my end, so... And you can't reply to me, so I guess, you know, I'm not gonna really know what you're doing. But, I mean, I hope everything's going well for you, because it is for me. But, today, the video I'm gonna make today, or for this one, is about an experience I had just over the past, well, a couple of days ago, actually. Um, I had a conversation with someone and I thought there were some things maybe that we could talk about or, you know, that I raised with them or that, you know, was raised in the conversation that I thought was useful to talk about here. So, to give context, um, a couple of weeks ago, the Secretary for New South Wales Health, which is a lady called uh, Susan Pearce, uh, and if you don't know what, what a secretary does in an organization, you, you might be thinking as like a, a personal assistant or something like that. But no, um, a, when someone is a secretary of an organization, they're pretty much the overarching, they're, they're the top person in the, essentially in the organization, like the number one person. And there was a couple of weeks back, there was a um, email that was sent around to everyone pretty much saying like, hey, if you would like to have a 15 minute talk or like, you know, chat with uh, the secretary, Susan Pierce, like, you know, sign, like, you know, sign up. So I thought, I always love talking to people who are in positions like, like those, you know, because New South Wales Health is not only my, you know, where I work, but also, you know, it's a large organization, you know, about 40 to 50,000 employees across the state. And it, you know, focuses on something I think is important, which is public health. Um, you know, it's kind of its job. So yeah, you know, of course I want to sit down and, and have a conversation with someone who's running the organization and just see where their mind is at and what values and things, or just generally where, what's their mindset around things uh, to, you know, just better under my own understand, for, like, sorry, for my own understanding for the benefit of that. And, you know, someone like that is obviously playing at a very different level to which I you know, kind of operate in my day-to-day, -day, like, life or work and stuff like that. So, you know, love to get insight on that front. And, you know, and it's not like I can just randomly call a me meeting with uh, them. You know, it's such a large, large organization, that's not really possible. So I jumped at the opportunity, and unfortunately, it got booked out really quickly, so there was a bit of a waiting list. I was put onto, like, this kind of, like, waiting list. But the other day... Um, I think it was on Monday, or maybe it was last, maybe it was the week before, uh, I got an email saying, hey, are you still interested in having this conversation? Like, you're on the waiting list, are you okay with, you know, Thursday? And I was like, yep, sure thing, let's do it. So, we go into, I could, I could go how I got, like, you know, screwed around, and, and like, because I've only got 15 minutes, right? And yeah, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna be bitter about this. Well, not bitter, but like I'm I'm gonna raise it because I was I was robbed of five minutes. I was robbed of a third of my time with with um with the secretary. So I was the way it worked was you were meant to go to the concierge desk and then you know kind of tell them that you were you know there for the for the chat, and then the concierge person leads me to this like kind of kitchen break room area and is like yeah yeah just sit here and then someone will come get you or you know the secretary will come get you. Um, there you go. So my time starts at 10.15. I get there at 10.05 and so I'm like 10 minutes early and I'm just waiting in that break room. And then it kind of gets to 10.20 and no one has come to get me and I'm just like, what the hell is going on? So I'm kind of looking around just aimlessly and then one of the other uh, concierge staff is like, are you meant to be, you know, in here? And I was like, um, yeah, I'm, meant to, I'm waiting to be called in. And then they were like, oh, no, no, you just got to go. You were just meant to see the person leave the room and then you go straight in. And I'm like, well, how was I supposed to know which room they were in? But whatever, that's so good. That's all good. But I go in and so, you know, we say hello and stuff like that to, to the secretary. And I've only got the 10 minutes, so I'm like, oh, crap, i got to be quick about this. Like, you know, I can't really spend a lot of time doing much, you know, context or whatever, or introducing myself. Let's just kind of somewhat get into business once, once the pleasantries are done. And something I asked was, you know, and this, and this is from my own examination of the more senior I've got in my career or the more experience I've get, gotten, the more I realized that I spend a lot of my time in meetings, um, and that's also kind of a large organization kind of thing as well, like a, a factor of that. But 
when I look at the amount of time I spend in a work week in meetings, and then I look at my manager and how much time they spend in a meeting, and then I look, you know, and then kind of extrapolate from there, I think about, you know, how much time my manager's manager or my manager's manager's manager, like, you know, two, two to three rings up, you know, how much time they must spend in meetings and how difficult that, that is. So for someone who's the secretary, who's like the top dog of the whole organization, my question was, how do you manage, like, when you're going from meeting to meeting and you're, and you're literally, your whole work life is almost, you know, being pulled from one direction to the other, um, like, how do you, how did one, how do you, how do you manage, um, going from one bit of knowledge or learning, like, because people will be coming to, like, in these meetings that they go to, that these meetings, like, these senior people are going to, people are presenting information to them and they've just got to jump from one thing, one avenue of information to the next. And when you think about the, how broad health is as a concept, um, you know, and, and administering public health, you know, it's such a, there's not like endless avenues, which, which, um, you know, you can be informed or like, you know, have information brought to you about it. So I was like, how do you manage that? Like jumping from one to the other. And also how do you create change in a large organization where, you know, you're spending a lot of your time actually in meetings, uh, with people. How do you, cause you know, people like, like to think that organizational change is like, pivoting or turning on a jet ski or, or, or a speedboat when that isn't really the case. And especially with the larger the organization is, it gets even harder. Uh, but it's more like a cruise ship where, you know, moving a large organization in a direction, it's about making small little minor changes that although seem small when you're, when you're on the rudder, kind of like, you know, angling the ship, but those small little adjustments actually have, you know, quite large repercussions downstream and, you know, you know, down, down the line. So how do you go about that is what I was kind of asking her. And what she kind of said to me was that a lot of what she relies on is good people. So you need to have people that you can trust, but that you also know are, you know, and, and aren't afraid to interact with you. So you know, if there is bad news or if there are, you know, um, compromises that need to be made and you need to be aware of that and, you know, because maybe, you know, you might have a certain plan or vision for something, but the realities of the situation just don't, don't allow for it. That's where you need kind of good people who have the skills and knowledge, but also the right attitude and mindset and, you know, confidence to be able to tell you bad news, but also, you know, in the good times or, you know, maybe not, let's not call it good or bad, but, you know, in, in the day-to-day -day running of the operations, they're people that you can rely upon to get things done where you don't need to be hovering over them like a micromanager because, well, if you did that, well, if, if the secretary did do that, it, it would just be the organization would like, you know, fall to a standstill because everyone would be second guessing their work and what they're doing. So, that, that was, I thought, a good point. And I think that's just something for in general in life is about focusing on finding good people that fit those skills. But especially when you're at such a senior role in an organization of that size, I guess, yeah, it, it really does make or break your own um, effectiveness as, as, as a leader and as, and as someone who's trying to guide an organization. The other kind of thing that she was mentioning on that point was also uh, good governance frameworks. So that comes how to, how the organization is structured and what ways and in what, like who has what decision, decision rights or has the ability to make call, like um, calls on things. That's a, an important thing to, you know, kind of work out. And I can understand that you need good governance frameworks to be able to actually get things done because if no one actually really knows what needs to be done or sorry, no, no one knows what they can do or if everything is essentially, you know, at the, at the direction of the person at the head of the organization, like, you know, Susan is be, as being the secretary, once again, like the organization will, the organization's you know, performance will suffer because once again, there's a lot of second guess, there'll be a lot of second guessing, but also like 
there's only so much time that they can make this, you know, there to be there to make decisions. And, you know, no one person is the single kind of everything of an organization, especially not like, you know, not with the size of the kind of organization we're talking. So that was kind of one of the questions I kind of like brought forward uh, to the secretary and like, you know, I felt was like a fair enough response. It is a bit, you know, um, I guess like, I wouldn't say cop out, but it's like, it's kind of what it's an answer you would kind of expect from someone like that. But I guess that is the kind of truth of it. You know, when someone is in such a senior leadership role, that would be the thing that you would see because without that, you know, like I said, you're in meetings 20, pretty much 24 seven. You're not actually doing a whole lot of tangible physical work when it comes to the getting into the trenches and actually getting stuff done. So for someone in that kind of role, it's important to have those two sort of things sorted out, good people and good governance frameworks. So I think that's a lesson that we can all kind of learn and take, you know, within working in, in you know, just our personal lives, but also in our, in our own work lives. But the, n- one of the next questions I kind of asked or, was, you know, kind of was curious about was I've spoken about how like one of the epiphanies in my life was that, you know, like you have to obviously take care of yourself and put yourself at a stable level in life where you're doing well, but you also need to then not pursue solely self-interest at that point because, you know, that's a, it's a reckless and short-term strategy. And my point, and like, you know, and the extension from that is to then like, so if you're not going to solely focus on yourself, it's then to look out to your friends and family as the next area of, or the expansion of your area of influence and concern and action. Um, so it goes to then friends and family and then eventually to the wider community as a whole, as you kind of keep getting, keep, you know, improving and getting better and, and focusing more on, on delivering in that, on that front. And I explained that that was a huge epiphany in my life that had really changed how I went through the world. And I guess I asked what was something that maybe, maybe not like, well, you know, I, I said epiphany, but, um, you know, what, what's a lesson or teaching or insight that, you know, has you know, greatly in, impacted or changed how you, the way you look at things. And what Susan said was that the thing you've got to remember, and this can sound a little bit um, morbid, not, no, sorry, not morbid, but a little bit of a downer is, but, you know, it, within the context of the conversation, it didn't come off like that. But just like, if you hear it, oh, like paraphrase, like I am now it kind of can sound like a downer. So I'm just going to preface it with that is that you have to remember that at the end of the day, you're just fulfilling a role and that once you are finished with that role, like, no, there's a very high, like, you know, pretty much a very high chance that you will be forgotten and your contributions will be forgotten as time goes on. And I, well, I guess that's kind of the truth of life, you know, what time forgets us all, but the most you can kind of ask for is for people to somewhat maybe hope to, you know, remember and appreciate your contribution, but no, or like, like I said previously, no organization, no single person is like the, the everything of the organization. And once your time in a role is done, that's kind of it. You, you, you've moved on and the organization will move on from you too. So the, crux of what it's actually what she's trying to like get at and say to say to you with something like like an uh, insight like that is that you shouldn't and this is what she did kind of say was that you shouldn't kind of base your your value and sense of self-worth solely on the role that you do because like with everything it's temporary and also once you then exit that role you're more than likely you know it will only be a sh- you know matter of time before you're kind of gone and forgotten and I could probably think about that in my previous jobs in like where I've worked in other, other roles in other kind of, um, organizations. I can almost guarantee you probably no one remembers me even being there or, you know, what, I, what my contribution to the team. It's just one of those things that gets lost to time. And so don't, don't like, uh, put a huge ticket on yourself based off the role you do, because that will change eventually. And if your identity is based on that role and you know your sense of value, even though you might be, you know, you might have 
you know, you, you might provide great value and you, you're a very, you know, valuable person in the way, in your skills, knowledge, or just overall as a person, uh, even though that, is, that can be true, don't base it solely on your role because, yeah, things, think th- things will move on. And then I remember at the time when she was talking about that, I remember uh, I used it as an example to kind of, you know, reconfirm that and bounce the ball back was there was a aide or someone in the government who was working under the Obama administration. And I think I may have told the story already, but, you know, in one year they were in, they were working for the government and in the bureaucracy and they were invited to this conference. And so, you know, they were flown out, uh, uh, a limo or so, you know, like a chauffeur picked them up from the, from the, uh, apartment. So not from the apartment, from the airport and then took them to the hotel, took them from the hotel to then the conference, you know, um, event, you know, there was a hand of like, when they got to the event, there was a handler who, you know, like, you know, stage hand who like kind of led them around and was like, do you want anything? Like, you know, full, like full taking kick, like mad care of them. And then, you know, fast forward a year, that person is no, that same very person who was there the year before and, you know, was treated, you know, with such reverence and, and, you know, treated very well and how they were, that they were, um, chauffeured around in the second or the year, the next year when they were no longer in the organization, they were no longer fulfilling some, the role that they were in before. Um, they, they kind of rock up to the, the, sorry, they, they let their plane lands and they have to get a, they have to get a taxi to the, to the hotel and then have to get a taxi from the hotel to the conference. And then, you know, there was no handler. They just had to, they, they had to get their own coffee and water. And I know that sounds like, oh, I can't believe you had to get your own coffee. But, you know, when you're talking about someone who's high up in an organization, you know, it's actually the role that is being served, not the person fulfilling the role. The, the role is the one that has the um, status or, you know, sense of reverence and deferral to. And, and that's something, like we said, is tied up in that. And it's not about you, even though you might be a, like, you know, really talented and really valuable, it's the role that's everything. It's, it's truly the role that remembers, not you. Like you won't be remembered, but the role will be remembered. So yeah, I guess something to think about and hopefully, you know, provide some sort of insight to you. I thought it was a, it was a good time. I only had 10 minutes, so I made the most of it. Um, there was a few other questions, but they're, they're on other stuff related to, to, to do with the health system. So I'm not going to bore you with that, but, um, yeah, I had a great time. And, you know, if you ever do get the chance to have a conversation with someone who is in that kind of senior leadership role, especially in like, you know, regardless of the organization, but it is always interesting to see ones or talk to uh, leaders in large organizations. It's always good to ask them questions like that because I just feel like, you know, those people go through their day to day having to do with so much information and people just telling them things and all this stuff. So to have a conversation like that would be very, um, I think, you know, good for them. And it's also good for you because you get to see the mind of someone who's working at and operating at such a high level. And I think that's always, there's always something you can glean from that. So yeah, thanks so much. See you around. Bye.